In Autodesk Inventor, we use constraints and joints to hold parts in place in an assembly. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to use both constraints and joints effectively. I have used both constraints and joints to hold my parts in place in this partial model of an oil well tool. One of the advantages of using constraints and joints is that you can still simulate motion when you put things in place. For example, when I come in here and look at this barrel here, I can push this barrel and because it's connected with some constraints and joints to the parts inside the model, I can simulate the opening of each of those arms. And it's very simple to do as long as you kind of understand some of the basic concepts behind this. So in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to place uh, your parts apply constraints and joints, and show how to change those if necessary. If I come to this model here, um, I've put my base barrel in or my base body in, and I need to place a couple other parts before we move on. The first thing that I want to place is I want to place a holder block that would be uh, inside, it goes inside this little pocket right here, and it's going to, you know, you could put some screws in there, some cap screws in there to hold it in place. In order to place this first part, I'll go to place, and then I will come down and I will choose my holder block and choose open and just place it into the assembly here. Now it's in the assembly, but it's not constrained in any fashion. So what I'll start with here is showing how to use simple constraints. The first constraint that I'm going to place is just a mate constraint. And I'll say I want a mate constraint between the top surface of this pocket <clears throat> and then the bottom surface of this holder block. So I can choose OK here, and now it's put that holder block in place, but it's not really constrained completely yet. You can see that I can still move it around. It's not even facing the right direction. So from here, I'll put a couple other constraints in. Going back to the constraint tool, I'm going to put in another mate constraint, but I'm going to say I want the center of that, uh, that hole, the center line axis of that hole, and it's going to be aligned with the center line axis of that hole. Apply. And then I want to do the same thing on the other side here. So I'll zoom in so I can get the center line axis of that hole, and I want it aligned with the center line axis of that hole. At this point, if I choose OK, you'll see that this part is now completely constrained. It won't move anymore. One way to demonstrate that is to come in and use the Show Degrees of Freedom tool on the View tab, Degrees of Freedom. And when I click Degrees of Freedom, you'll see that there are no Degrees of Freedom visible here. The next thing that I want to do is I want to insert that arm that's going to open and close. So again, I'll come in here and I'll say place, and I'm going to choose this arm, pardon me, I'm gonna choose this arm right here, say open, and I'll place this in the assembly as well. Now from here, it becomes a little bit easier to apply my constraints and my joints if I don't have this body in the way. So I'm gonna right click on the body and just turn the visibility off all of the rest of the constraints still stay in place. In order to put this together now, instead of using a constraint, I'm going to use a joint. Joints have a little bit more power than just regular constraints do because you can also add some limits to them. So I'm going to choose joint, and you'll see that there are several different types of joints to choose. If I leave it as automatic, Inventor will look at the assembly, look at the types of surfaces that I'm putting together, and pick what it thinks is best. So rigid is just what you think it is. It's going to put the two things together. It's not going to allow any movement whatsoever. Rotational is like a door hinge. It allows it to rotate but not slide. A slider allows two things to slide together but won't allow them to rotate. Cylindrical allows things to rotate and slide. Planar is kind of like you know a face-to-face, -face. and then a ball is like a hip joint, where you have one that goes into another and can have 360 degrees of uh, rotational ability. For this one, I'm going to use rotational. 
Then what I want to do is I want to pick <clears throat> my surfaces. When I come over here to this cylindrical surface, I want to pick the, I'm gonna pick the end point there, okay? And I just wanna to move to the end until it gives me that circle and I'll pick. Notice the little arrow pointing down, that's going to be an alignment arrow and we'll adjust that in a few minutes. And then I'm gonna turn my model around a little bit here and I'm gonna go and pick the same point on the holder block, pick. And you'll see that it comes in here and it aligns it. Um, Remember the first arrow that I had was pointing down and now the second arrow was pointing to the left. So my arm ends up having the incorrect um, orientation. That's not the orientation that I want it to have. So before I move any further, what I want to do is I want to change the orientation of this arm so that it's sticking straight out as it was when I first put the part in. To do so, you go to the Align tool here, and I'll say my first alignment, and I know that on the end of this, there's a surface right here that I want to have pointing straight out to the left. So I'll pick that surface. Notice now that it's allowing me to, you know, move this in whatever direction I want. And what I could do now is I could come over here and I could expand the origin and I could pick a surface here, or I know that I just come in and I want it to be aligned with that surface right there there. So now that restores it to that original alignment that I had, okay, so that everything is all lined up as if the part were closed. Now from here, <clears throat> what I want to do is I want to add some limits because I want this arm to be able to open and close, but not completely. I want it to, you know, limit it to straight out like this or maybe at a 90 degree angle. So checking on the, click on the limits tab here, I'm going to say I want to allow an angular uh, rotation. And it's going to say, okay, zero degrees is where it is now. Notice it's pointing zero degrees out to the left. And my end, I want it to have, in this case, I'm gonna start off with a negative 30 degrees. So you can see what it's doing is it's allowing it to start out from here and then rotate up as much as 30 degrees. If I choose OK, it applies that. And now if I wanted to simply test it to see if that's what I wanted, I could open it up. Notice that when it gets to 30 degrees here, it stops. It won't let it go any further. So there's zero degrees straight out. And then here's 30 degrees straight up, okay? But if I decided that 30 degrees is too open, which it is in this case, I can come back in and I can change that measurement. I don't have to reapply my, you know, delete the joint and reapply it. I can simply come in here and change it. You change that by going to the manage tab and then parameters and you'll find that angle right here. In this case it's dimension 5, negative 30 degrees. I'm going to change that to negative nine and a half degrees because I know that that for this application that's what it's supposed to be. Press enter, choose done, and now when I look at this <clears throat> I will see that I can open this only nine and a half degrees and close it. Okay, so that's the amount of uh, angular change that I want that part to have. Coming back in here, let's go ahead and insert a couple more parts. I'm going to turn the visibility of my body back on. <clears throat> and then I'll go ahead and I'll insert the barrel and the cam. So on my Assemble tab, I'll choose Place. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to choose my Barrel and my Cam. So let's see here, I've got my Holder Block, Body. Uh, I need my Barrel and I need my Cam. So I'll place both of those at the same time. Oh, that's not the right Cam. Place, let's do this again. 4,500 barrel. I'll go and do them one at a time. Okay, and then I want to place my cam. <clears throat> so I'll come in here and I'll find my three arm cam. There it is right there. All right. <clears throat> Now this barrel has the incorrect orientation. I want this end to be inside. To place this one, I'm just simply going to use constraint again. I want the center line of this barrel to line up with the center line of the body. 
Notice that it's facing the wrong direction, so I'm going to turn it around using a posed. So that has the orientation that I want, and I'll choose OK. Now I can slide this out, and I know that I want this cam to be affixed to the end of this. So I'll go ahead and use joint here, and I'll use rigid because I want it to be rigid. And I'm going to say I want the endpoint of this to be aligned with <clears throat> this portion right here. Pick there. And it's going to fix that rigidly. And I'll say OK. So there's a nice rigid orientation. Um, when I move this back and forth, it's actually moving the entire cam. Notice that it still does indeed have a rotational because this has rotation still available with it. Now that I've got those in place, I'm going to go ahead again and turn off the visibility of my body so that I can, oops, so that I can see inside of this while I'm doing my assembly. And ultimately, this needs to come inside of here, and the cam is going to sit inside that little cam pocket right there so that it can actuate this arm and open it and close it. I'm going to do this by putting two things in. The first thing that I'll do is I'm going to put an angular constraint in between this front surface here and this surface here just so that it's not going to want to rotate at all. So I'll say, OK, let's put an angular constraint in. I just want two surfaces. And I want that surface and that surface to be at 0. So I'll say, OK. So now as I move this back and forth, I've taken away that ability of that to slide open and close or change angles. And now I'm going to add another constraint. And this one's kind of fun, kind of interesting. On this one, I'm going to use a transitional constraint. And I'm going to use this one right here, transitional. And what it allows me to do is to pick a surface here and make it tangent to a surface here. So I can choose OK there. And now as I slide this cam back and forth, you can see that it opens and closes my part. Okay, So that's very handy when you're trying to animate something. So now I'm pretty much done with all of those you know, assemblies. So I can go ahead and turn on my body visibility one more time. And if I wanted to finish this out, I could come in and put screws and that kind of stuff in. And then I could even pattern <clears throat> in a rotational manner. I want to pattern that and the arm itself. My rotational, um, let's see, my axis is going to be the center here. OK, I want three of them and they are separated by 120 degrees. And when I say OK, now all three of those arms are in place. And when I push on that, it opens and activates them each. So I hope that that's been helpful. Now you hopefully have a better idea of how to use constraints and joints and reorient those joints.